here. All right, looks like everything's set. Good morning to episode six of Breaking Down These Fights. Today we have the Korean heavyweight versus Russian heavyweight, and then later we're breaking down Daehoon versus another Russian. Uh, so Korea versus Russia, Korea versus Russia. Uh, this first match I actually watched. There's not too much, not too many fireworks in this one. A lot of a lot of outside subtle tactics. Not too much kicking going on until the third round, until the uh, until spoiler alert, sudden death later. Uh, but let's see how these guys handle this right now. Oh, turn this down. Sorry, guys. We did analyze uh, Korea beforehand, but I, unlike Daehoon or Achab, I haven't really been studying these guys that much. I like the uh, I like Russia dictating this match already, bringing some forward pressure. Korea, I think uh, the overall tactic by Korea is almost like similar to Daehoon, still just uh, still just maintaining distance uh, on the kick if they're not sure of what to do. Uh, so sets up stuff later, uh, sets up the punch later as we can see. But a lot of Korea's game right now is just maintaining distance, maintain distance, uh, wait till they're done kicking so you don't run into anything. And yeah, like I said, this. This fight, there's not too much fireworks, and you need to. People, I think people need to learn. Um, not every game is going to have a, b a bunch of kicking. Not every game is going to have 50 kicks every minute. Some games are like this, and you got to know how to win these ones too. Uh, this is the final, though, so they're probably exhausted from the day of fighting. Um, reports were that it's hot. Russia's still maintaining the offensive pressure. What's interesting to note also is look how close their feet are together. They're like almost on the same mat. Korea's really not giving space if he feel like he doesn't need to. Feels like he can keep himself safe. Can play literally, literally inside Russia's distance and still be fine. Try a little bit of offense. I think first round a lot sometimes what a lot of heavyweights like to do, what I like to do is I can get by the first round without doing anything. I'm perfectly okay with that. If I don't need to engage that much perfectly fine um what i do try and do in my first round is kind of like what rush is doing right here he's trying to fish out what is korea sitting on what kind of defense is you finding what kind of um what kind of kicks are you sitting on this match was there a scattering report before that you're trying to figure out how i do um so first round over like i said a lot of, a lot of heavyweights the way I, sometimes i like to play it is just let's just try and get this through this, through this round if you don't want to engage too much i don't want to engage too much if i can get you to kick more than me though that's a bonus for my end um, I have tried fast forwarding this to see if I could to like try and test myself, but the timer is for four hours, so a slightly inaccurate click here means we missed something. I'm not gonna not gonna do that. Cause then I have to rewind and we have to wait through even more even more stuff. Thank you guys for tuning in though. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and feel free to put those in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll address those when I see them. Uh, but. Yeah, open forum, guys. If you guys disagree with any of the points I'm making, go ahead and say that too. Open, open feedback. Yeah, and for those of you guys who don't know right now, is actually um, Korea just finished a battle and uh, he survived it, and he's uh, back in back doing the sport he loves. Russia dictating the fight right away, putting the offensive pressure on. Korea responding in kind, just because, uh, just to get more ring position, he doesn't want to be left out in the corner like that. Just smart ring positioning. Yeah. So Korea is looking to close the distance more on uh, Russia's motions now. I think because last round all he was doing is maintain distance, maintain distance, and this round he's looking to uh, try and close it, score a punch maybe, score some kicks on the inside. Uh, what Korea, what Russia had done there, the reason for the head kick actually was because he just saw Korea closing in on him twice. So he's already thinking ahead, thinking maybe the game plan is to close the distance, which, which in my opinion it is. And uh, the headshot right there is a good choice, good defense choice by him. 
There might be a headshot coming out. Oh, no. If I had, Russia had instigated that, that would have been a good good opportunity for a headshot. Krius battling for ring position. Good try. Good try. I like how Russia is keeping him on the side like this. This is very good. Um, keeping him here, kind of near the edge, near the outside. Good. It sets up, it sets up possible opportunities later. I don't think uh, he should have let him go out like that, but it's near the end of the day. These guys are both tired. I'm I'm pretty sure they're not too much on the maintenance there. Uh, like I was saying, Korea's looking to close the to alternate between sliding out, maintaining distance, and looking to close the gap. Keep Russia guessing. Um, and he's I think he's trying to score the punch because it doesn't seem like the Dado is scoring to the body now. He's trying to look for those refs to maybe give him the give him the subjective point. Running out round two. This for me is actually not too bad. I would pretty uh, if I were in this match, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too upset about this. Zero zero going into the third. Lots of energy left. If you guys notice, there's not a lot of stamina that they put out these two rounds. It's not super high pressure. It's not um, there's not too many kicks going on. Just reserving all the energy for when they when they think they're going to need it, which is the third round. Um, you guys don't, by the way, you guys don't have to fight your match like this. You guys can go out swinging if you can do all three rounds. If you guys watch Mongolia, those guys will swing until they can't swing anymore, but by that time you're probably way dead tired too. And uh, that's where they capitalize. You guys don't have to play your matches like this. I prefer to. Um, I like being precise and uh, efficient with my kicks, but it's not, not mandatory. It's not a hard, fast rule. That was a good try there. What's interesting to note, though, if you guys are watching Korea, Korea will usually try something in the last 10 seconds that will set up for what they're doing in the third round. If it's effective, they'll use it. If it's not effective, they're not. They're going to wipe it. The coach will give them something else to do third round. Um, near the end of the round, Korea tried the punch, tried to close in, and try and score on the inside. I think that's probably going to be the game plan going in here. Uh, Russia didn't really give too much information about how to how to score on him or where he's open. Russia, I think, this is smart to go with the deep kicks, the deep hanging kicks, because if your kick's hanging first, if they come in, you can kind of maybe clip a small point. And if they move back the way Korea's been doing, you can chase them with it. So I think that adjustment by Russia is very good. Ooh, almost got it. Almost got it. Yeah. And because they're playing the, the, um, the distance game, if you come in with a deep attack, you're most likely, more often than not, able to catch them as they're sliding back. Like, uh, if you try to imagine someone running forward versus running backwards, even if the guy running backwards has a head start, you're eventually going to catch them. So I think Russia's choice here, Russia's game plan to go deep with most of the attacks is good. Korea needs to mix this up, uh, which he's doing, mix this up with a with a uh, long defense and then the coming in close. I think. Right now, it's just a game of rock, paper, scissors. They're alternating between going long and Russia going long or going short when Russia goes long. It's a uh, rock, paper, scissors right now. Very subtle rock, paper, scissors going on in terms of strategy. Korea is looking for this punch, though. Looking to try and score this punch because it doesn't look like the, um, the body kicks are scoring. I think he's probably going to go, Korea's probably going to go back uh, or maintain distance on this next one. Yeah. Because the reason for that is because um, he just came in. He knows Russia knows he just came in. So Russia's going to go over the head, maintain existence. Obviously a better way to dodge the headshot than having to block that. Yeah. We're moving to a sudden, it looks like we're, this match we moved to sudden death. Yeah. So if you guys noticed during that match, there's a slight rock paper scissors going on, just like I, like I was saying earlier. There's a maintain distance versus maintain distance, and so the guy on offense has to guess whether to go long, to go deep with his attack, or to kick short. And because this guy, he's just trying to guess whether this Korean guy is going to come in, so obviously kick short, or if he's going to slide back. That's when Russia has to go long. Um, in my opinion, it's best to throw if you're on the offense and you're not sure. It's best to throw the attack twice because the first time the same attack twice. Let's say the first time uh, you kick short, they slide back. 
the next time they're thinking you're going to kick long because they just slid back. But if you kick short again, you're going to be one step ahead. More likely than not, they're going to slide into it, in my experience. So uh, if you guys are ever caught that position, you're not sure what your opponent's going to do. Um, you guys can kick short and then kick short. or like kick, I would kick short, see if they slide back. On the next one, they're probably going to do the opposite, so kick short again. If they really, if they still do slide back, reset the game, disengage, come back around, motion, motion, and then try kicking short again. If if the game plan they're going is go out or go in, they're mostly gonna come in either on the second or the third. So uh, yeah, like oh, let's watch this first. Let's try. Unfortunate. Um, good point by Russia over here. Uh, if you guys missed it, I'll see if I can. See if I can get this rewind for you guys. Here we go, golden point. Russia sneaks it on underneath. Underneath three is punch. Uh, in my opinion, kind of risky because more often than not, I think the punch would usually goes up and it's not guaranteed that the kick underneath is going to score. But Nice try. Um, in terms of play, in terms of play, I think Korea here, actually, this is a good good game plan. Russia this entire time hasn't really, at least, stood his ground most of the game. He's, he didn't really move back. So the uh, expectation for him to do a retreating Padachagi, doing a retreating 45 like this, um, not not something that was factored into the decision to do this punch. Uh, good adjustment or good instinct. I'm not sure if that was part of the game plan. Good instinct by Russia to, to do that. Uh, got the point in underneath. You guys saw that. Just make sure your kicks are accurate. I'm going to try and fast forward here to uh, where's the Dehun fight. Dehun versus Russia. I think this is this is it. I believe this is Denisenko. A uh, lot of technical difficulties going on. Uh, can I fast forward this? Okay. Yeah, it's Denisenko. So Denisenko, uh, um, I believe, was the world champion. Um, yeah, world champion 2017. Yeah, and I think he beat... Ooh, sneaky. Beat the Uzbekistan guy. So, specifically for Dehun, for those of you who are watching, for Dehun spe this Dehun specific, I want you guys to watch Dehun's forward pressure and uh, the variation is kicks. When I'm talking about the variation is kick isn't necessarily the um, front leg or is he using the back leg. It's a lot of changing targets, a lot of changing tempo and the speed of his kick. And uh, watch the way he manipulates that. Creates some, he creates a lot of forward pressure to one, he gets to see uh, what Russia City on. And uh, secondly, he forces he forces a lot of stamina um, force, because he's forcing so much mental pressure forward. He forces out a lot of stamina on the opponent. Um, this has been seen throughout the entire all of the fights I've watched versus him versus Ran, him against uh, Taipei, him against pretty much anyone. The amount of forward pressure Dehun brings into a fight is incredible. Right in his face. These kicks right now are um, something I'd studied with one of my teammates was. His kicks right now aren't always full blast. They're not 100% speed every single time. Forward pressure, footwork, forward pressure. Yeah. But Dehun's, uh, yeah, Dehun's um, kicks aren't 100% speed, 100% power every time. He's a lot of it is uh, like almost like half speed, getting just make, trying to get his leg in the way. And if it scores, it scores. Dehun just has incredible technique, and he doesn't need to throw it 110% to score. He knows exactly how much pressure it's going to take to score. Because of all the forward pressure, he's, uh, what's it called? Ooh, oh my gosh. Creating great space. Pushing forward, pushing forward. I'll uh, give you guys my thoughts after this. Cause it looks like there's going to be a lot of a lot of points coming out in this one.
you guys notice, Dehun is still on the offensive offensive posture. He's still the one bringing the match. Okay, so my thoughts here. Dehun doing an incredible job uh, poking through Danseko's defense. He knows Danseko, from, at least from what I remember from when I watched him. Dynamic front leg, can do that hook kick from behind, can score on the cut. He's trying to find the hole in Danisenko's uh, game, and he's doing that by so much forward pressure. He tried a couple times scoring from the outside. He set this, he set this up, scoring a couple times from the outside. He's kind of feeling it out. Nothing there. Um, maybe on the follow-up kick, one, two, nothing really there. Third option, get inside, try and score that way. It seemed like the first time he kicked, he, he, got, in, he got a small kick in, didn't go up, but he saw the opportunity. Second time, lands the headshot, just like in the camera. Dehun probably going to be the same game plan. Forward pressure. Probably looking more for that inside fight. The only thing he has to be careful is uh, Dennis Aiko has a great inside double, inside bullet kick to the head. Um, he caught... Uh, I forgot who it was. One of the top players with that. Uh, in, I think, Worlds. Same thing. If you guys want to watch a game for offensive pressure, watch Dehun. Oh my, this guy is a monster at keeping himself safe and um, pushing the fight. Now, even though he's doing all this offensive posture, something to note also is he's initially thinking to maintain distance. Um, oh, let's try. Maintaining distance. If he doesn't like what he sees, he maintains distance. Dennis Aiko on the outside. He keeps him on the outside edge here because when you're on the outside, you just have less options. That's uh, part of why... He's Dehun's forward all the time. Cut out the options of your opponent. Yeah. Dehun's getting pretty close. Changing targets. Dehun changing it up already. Changing targets. Not letting Dennis Anko come up with a good game plan against an offense because he keeps changing the offense. Let's try. Dennis Anko finally meeting his forward pressure a little bit. Now... Now he's back on the back foot. Nice. There it is. There it is. Ooh. Nice, Dennis Inko. Good, uh, got him done for going out, but good, uh, good back kick. If I could fast forward this, I would, guys. If I could fast forward, I would. A part of the thing to note, too, guys, is Dehun is throwing the head kicks after Dennis Anko's in the corner. After he's on the edge, that's where Dehun's more likely to go for the headshot because he knows Dennis Anko can't move back anymore. The headshot, he scored here on the edge. Uh, let me show you guys. Over here? Uh, not, not here. <laughs> uh, denied. Okay. Loss of a card. That's actually kind of big. When he, when uh, Lee Dan Hoon, when Dennis Inko was over here on this edge, that's when he started the headshot. And when Dennis Inko was on the outside on this edge, near the outside, that's when Dehun attempted the headshot because he knows Russia is no longer going back. Easy way, easy easy way to set up a headshot. Probably looking for another one inside either to the head. Oh, there it is. Knows Dennis Inko is not going back. He knows he has good stance against him. Probably gonna try a headshot soon if he's still on the edge like that. I'd body body in the head. Dennis Angle trying to keep him on the back foot. Good way to get out of that. That was that was pretty close. I feel like if uh, Dennis Angle hadn't moved there, Dehun probably would have tried to cut to the head, something straight to the head. But we'll see. Moving into third round, if, if I could fast forward this accurate. Oh wait, maybe I can. Let's try it. We got it. Okay, cool. Fast forward for you guys. My opinion, I think Russia should be standing a little bit more toe to toe against Dehun, not letting him dictate the offense, because it's giving, um, it's letting Dehun pick, pick and choose where he wants to engage versus uh, the Russian picking where he wants to choose to engage. Obviously, you have more options. The outcomes look better for you. Wow. Just poking and prodding. 
Dan's kicks now have a little bit more weight on them, if you guys haven't noticed. A little bit faster than they were throwing in front first round. Dan's probably going to change target. Yeah. He's making sure to not do the same thing over and over again, because that's how you get hit with the turning side. Dennis Senko, I like I like that he's stepping up a little bit more. He's not he's not just giving it out to uh to Dayun whenever one Dayun wants to engage. Nice. Dayun also got hit with the turning side, so he's using this to poke and prod. Not too much um nice try. Trying to poke and prod while avoiding the turning side. That's why it's um, most. He, if you notice, he's not committing too deep into any attack. He's never too deep. Good cut. Oh, no follow up. We'll see if uh, they say we can find something. Oh, that was close. Nice try. Nice try. There you go. Awesome job. One yeah, one point. That was very close. I think if uh I think it was smart of uh Denisenko here to push him out here. Dehun responded by just taking the gum jung. Um I think if he could have stayed in safely he would have, but obviously saw that he couldn't. And so, uh, being on the outside there, taking this Gumjong, smart play by him. I made it kills the clock a little bit. Dennis Seiko, I think third round, if he applied third round tactics into his second round, a little bit more forward pressure, a little bit more matching uh, Dehun toe to toe as he's coming forward, I think could have turned a little bit better for him. All of Dehun's points came from just constant forward pressure, getting the guy on the side, scoring on the inside, or um, or a forward pressure if he doesn't move. Same same tactic. Doesn't move, you just just goes. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. I'm gonna throw this up on YouTube probably within the day. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow for more fight breakdowns. Appreciate it, guys. Love you all. Hope you guys have a good day or evening, depending on where you're watching from.